Recently, SpaceX has launched a Falcon 9 rocket filled with 60 satellites into space. This marked the beginning of a new project, Starlink. Starlink is a chain of satellites launched by Mr. Musk's company, SpaceX, which will form part of a massive network of 12,000 satellites aiming to provide new, higher speed internet connections across the world in the future. However, in this video we will share with you the true reason behind Starlink and how it can be of benefit to you. SpaceX aims to make their broadband as accessible as possible, claiming that anyone will be able to connect to their network if they buy the pizza box size antenna which SpaceX is developing. This launch of 60 satellites was just the first of many. SpaceX has 12,000 satellites planned for launch over the next decade. This will cost SpaceX billions of dollars, so they must have a good reason for doing so. This is quite an interesting background behind it. In 2015, Elon announced that SpaceX was working on a communication satellite broadband capabilities. Around that time, SpaceX opened a new facility in Redmond, Washington to develop and manufacture these new communication satellites. Initially, they wanted to launch two prototype satellites into orbit by 2016 and have the initial satellite constellation up and running by 2020. But the company struggled to develop a receiver that could be easily installed by the user for a low cost. This delayed the program and the first prototype satellites weren't launched until 2018. After a successful launch of two prototypes, Tintin A and B, SpaceX kept pretty quiet about what was next for the Starlink project. In November 2018, FCC-approved SpaceX received to deploy 7,500 satellites into orbit, on top of the 4,400 that were already approved. On May 24th, the first batch of production satellites was launched into orbit, and people around the world quickly started to spot the train of satellites moving across the night sky. Let's look at these functionalities first. Ion thrusters primarily use electric potential to fire ions out of the spacecraft to provide propulsion. Xenon is ideally used because it has a high atomic mass, which offers more kick per atom. However, SpaceX opted for Krypton, as Xenon's rarity makes it a far more expensive propellant. This ion thruster will initially be used to raise the Starlink satellites from their release orbits at 440 kilometers to their final orbit height of 550 kilometers. SpaceX has included all the necessary hardware to minimize space debris risk. In their Federal Communications Commission approval application, they claim that 95% of the satellite will burn up on re-entry, with only the ion thruster internal structure and silicon carbide components standing a chance of survival. Which brings us to our communications abilities, the primary function of the satellite. SpaceX has been tight-lipped on many of the details of the satellite. Still, thanks to the FCC filing, we know that the satellite will contain five 1.5 kilogram silicon carbide components, which indicates that each satellite will provide five individual lasers. These lasers, like our fiber optic cables here on Earth will use light pulses to transmit information between satellites. Transmitting with light in space offers one massive advantage over transmitting with light here on Earth. However, the speed of light is not constant in every material. In fact, light travels 47% slower in glass than in a vacuum. This offers Starlink one huge advantage that would likely be its primary moneymaker. It provides the potential of lower latency information over a long distance. The first source of latency for Starlink will be during the up and down link process, where we need to transfer our information to and from the Earth. We know this will be done with Phase Array Antenna, which is a radio antenna that can control the direction of their transmission without moving parts. Instead, they use a destructive and constructive interface to control the direction of the radio wave. Each satellite has a cone beam with an 81 degree range of view with an orbit of 550 kilometers. Each satellite can cover a circular area with a radius of 500 kilometers. SpaceX needs so many satellites in its constellation to provide worldwide coverage. Each individual Starlink satellite has four phased array antenna located here, 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 and here. Once that data is received by one Starlink satellite, it can begin to transmit that information between satellites using lasers. Each time we hop from satellites, there will be a small delay as the laser light is converted to an electrical signal and back again, but it is too minuscule to consider. Things get tricky here with using lasers, as we need to accurately hit the receiver on the neighboring satellites to transmit that data. 
Communication between neighboring satellites in the same orbital plane is relatively simple, as these satellites will remain in a relatively stable position in relation to each other. This gives us a solid line of communication along a single orbital plane. Still, in many cases, a single orbital plane will not connect two locations, so we need to be able to transfer information between these planes too. This requires precise tracking, as the satellites traveling in neighboring orbital planes are traveling incredibly quickly and will come in and out of view. This means the Starlink satellite will need to switch to a new satellite in the network. This can take time. The best figure I could find is about a minute for the European Space Agency's Data Relay Satellite System, which is a currently operating geostationary internet constellation designed to serve European imaging satellites and other time-critical applications, such as serving emergency forces in remote areas like those fighting forests fires. Starlink may be faster, but it won't be instantaneous, and thus it has five optical communication systems on board to maintain a steady connection to four satellites at all times. If we now use this system, transmitting from New York to London and back with the shortest path possible, using the speed of light in a vacuum as our transfer speed, we can achieve latency as low as 43 milliseconds. Even if we took the shortest route possible with an optic fiber, which would not exist, it would take about 55 milliseconds, a 28% decrease in speed. The actual current return trip for your average Joe is about 76 milliseconds as we saw earlier, a 77% decrease in speed. This is a massive deal for the two financial markets working out of these cities. With millions of dollars being moved in fractions of a second, having a lower latency would provide a massive advantage in capitalizing on price swings. In fact, it wouldn't be the first time a communications company has made a massive investment to serve these groups individually. The Hibernian Express cable has the lowest latency connection between the NY4 data center in Secaucus, New Jersey and the LD4 data center in Slough, England, currently at just 59.95 milliseconds, 39.4% slower than our best time with Starlink. The previous best time was held by the AC1 cable at 65 milliseconds. Imagine how much these time-sensitive industries will be willing to pay for a 17 millisecond increase in speed. It becomes even more valuable when you realize this time differential increase with increased transmission distance. New York to London is a relatively short distance. The improvements would be even more pronounced for a London to Singapore transmission. For every additional kilometer we travel, the potential gains in speed increase rapidly. But SpaceX isn't just planning on serving this super-fast internet to some customers. However, they primarily advertise this system as a way to connect every human on the planet to the internet, and they should have plenty of bandwidth left over to serve these people. Although the internet has been one of the fastest growing technologies in human history, by the end of 2019, more than half of the world's population will still be offline. Four billion. Users will connect to this internet using a Starlink terminal which will cost around $200 each. This will always be far outside the purchasing power of many third world citizens. But it's a start, and vastly cheaper than similar currently available receivers like the Kameta version at a price of $30,000. Elon Musk says that these will be flat enough to fit onto the roof of a car and other vehicles like ships and aeroplanes. This will allow Starlink to compete with traditional internet providers. It's estimated that moving the US from a 4G to a 5G wireless connection will cost around $150 billion in fiber optic cabling alone over the next seven years. SpaceX plan to complete their entire Starlink project for as little as $10 billion. Each Starlink satellite costs around $300,000, which is already a massive cut in cost for communication satellites. SpaceX is also saving on launch costs as they are launching on their own Falcon 9 rocket something that no other satellite manufacturer has. If everything goes to plan, Starlink is estimated to generate 30 to $50 billion in revenue each year on the back of premium stock exchange memberships, demolishing their current annual revenue of around $3 billion. And this is a vital part of Elon Musk's long-term goals. The money that Starlink has generated will mean SpaceX will have vastly more funding than NASA, which could go on to fund research and development of new rockets and the technology needed to monetize lunar and Martian colonies. For now, the project is merely connecting the world even more and potentially opening avenues for education for third world countries that do not have adequate connection to the internet. Imagine if Lionel Messi, the greatest football player alive, was never found and brought to Barcelona to develop his talents where he received necessary medical treatment for growth hormone deficiency. We would have been deprived of his talents 
and this happens regularly for remarkably talented and intelligent children in countries where they simply do not have access to education. Widely available internet will help solve this problem, and platforms like Brilliant have taken significant steps to remedy this through their high-quality interactive math and science learning. Brilliant has helped thousands of users realize their potential in math and science, and it's stories like this why I'm proud to promote Brilliant every month. They have a considerable number of courses that will allow you to educate yourself, from foundational maths courses to courses tailored for you to ace the American Mathematics competition with others geared for computer science and physics. Brilliant recently introduced a new feature called Daily Challenges, which will present you with interesting scientific and mathematical problems to test your brain every day. So, what do you think of Starlink?